Hello everyone, my name is Melody Flinker and I'll be going over a brief history about handmade paints and then I will explain how to make an egg tempura, which is what all this stuff is for. And then I will end on modern day paints such as acrylics. All right, thank you. Beginning over 10,000 years ago, human beings discovered that if you mixed animal parts such as fat with minerals and from the earth, such as bones or charcoal, you can make paint. It's, it would stick to walls and they'd leave a mark. Moving on from more uh, primitive paints that used animal components, we switched into using more rocks, such as lapis lazuli, which I have here. They would use, they would grind up lapis lazuli, mix it with a component such as a raw egg, specifically the yolk as a binding agent, and then they would use this as a paint. And then that, okay, slow down. Okay. The use of lapis lazuli and other similar, similar mineral-based paints originated in the Saudi Arabia area around Egypt and such, and the actual minerals and ores used were imported from Asia and Europe. These mineral-based components allowed a much more color than the more primitive use of bones and minerals, such as charcoal, because they could get more variety of color from these stones, and they also learned to heat up certain stuff, such as using sulfur and, where is it, sorry. sulfur and mercury, they would mix those together and heat them up and get a bright red color. That would, as we, most people should know, mercury is toxic, and so nowadays that is out of practice. Another common paint would be mixing sand, lime, and copper ore, and then heating it up and mixing together. That would give a greenish blue color that's called Egyptian blue. These colors were used to decorate such as temples, their old temples and was again one of the more early types of paint. Moving on from the egg and animal fat paints, we moved into oil paints. Oil paints first were introduced, or this is according to artuk.com, sorry, I skipped that. This, they used the oil to, as in, to replace the egg as a binding agent, and that allowed the paints to last longer and retain more of a vibrant finish, as using an egg kind of leaves a matte tone to it. And then the final one, I skipped this. Well, no, actually, I think it's a perfect spot for it, is the really old ways of making white paint. In an earthenware pot, they would put lead inside of it with vinegar. They would seal it with manure which perhaps if I liked Miss Hannigan a little less, I might have done in here. Instead, we're going to use an egg and tempura to make a pink taint. What you need in order to make an egg tempura is, of course, an egg. Water. You need pigments, which in this case I have some dyes and blush. You need paper towels, which I have here, a paintbrush, a palette, which in this case, I'm using these clear containers so you can see inside them, a teaspoon to measure out, and in some cases, a mortar and pestle. In this case, I have free ground pigments, so I'm not grinding my own. Step one is to find your pigment. This can be, if you go around your house, any sort of colored powder works. You can use spices such as paprika. You could use your makeup palette, which I had stolen some from mine, or you could use chalk and grind that up and use it. If it gets into something like chalk, you would have to grind it first in order to get it into the powder texture so it blends cleanly and you don't have chunks of pigment left. The second step is to move that pigment into your container. So I'm going to be making two separate colors. I'm going to use the pink, which I already had ground some out of this. There we go. Scoop that out. And then... 
for the third step, which is kind of a more messy step, you're going to need your eggs. I'm going to use this container for that and I'm going to lay out a paper towel, which I should have done previously. This is in case I spill egg yolk and don't get it on your table. So you crack your egg and put the white in the container. For this, you don't need the white. Well, I just put the whole thing in the container. <laughs> All right. You will move your yolk from hand to hand and separate it. Separate as much of the white from the yolk as you can. In this case, I just popped the yolk, which it's still fine, it'll work, but just gotta be a little bit more careful. There we go. All right, and now that I have just my yolk, I'm going to move it into this container and remove the egg sac. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to clean off my hands because that was significantly more messy than it needed to be. Good thing I have paper towels. All right, now that I have made a sufficient mess, let's move on to the fourth step, which I've hidden. There we go. The fourth step is to add your water, which will thin out your stuff. I'm Since I only got about half my yolk, I'm going to attempt that again, this time attempt to make less of a mess. All right. All right, there we go. Well, let's pour out this egg white and toss it from hand to hand. There we go. This time I did not pop the yolk. And let's pat it dry and do this correctly. Right. Let's get that last of the white off. There we go. All right. For the fourth step, we will add five table teaspoons, not tablespoons, way too much if you add tablespoons. You will add five teaspoons of water with your yolk. So I'm going to pinch my yolk so the egg back pops and dump out my egg yolk. There we go. And put the egg sac in with the egg white. Okay. Now take my water and measure out one teaspoon, two teaspoon, three teaspoons, four teaspoons, and five teaspoons. I'm gonna add an extra because there is more yolk in there. And then I'll use my fork to mix it up. It doesn't really matter what you do as long as you blend them nicely together. And now we wanna mix this together until you get a sort of heavy whipping cream consistency. And then once you have that good heavy whipping cream consistency, you can add in your pigment. In this case, I'm going to pour some out into my pigmented container with pigment. There we go. And mix it up in there. While I'm mixing this up, I will go over some people who are known to use this, such as Jacquev Varis. I horribly butchered that, I know but he was known for writing quotes with egg wash, which is another way to say egg tempura. Uh, this egg wash sort of consistency he used, uh, he wrote inspirational quotes with, and it was also significantly cheaper than things such as Lapulis blue paint. I did not test how well this specific pigment mixed beforehand, which is why we have other pre-mixed pigments. Let's use blue. Do you have scissors? Thank you, sorry. There you go. There you go. There you go. And by adding a, a finer powder than the one I had before, you get paint. There you go. That one worked much better because it was a much finer powder. All right. Now you take the card or whatever you had previously laid out as your canvas and you can paint with it. It creates, it'll be a very fast drying, so you'd rather make this in smaller quality, quantities. But you can just, now that you have your egg wash, the last step is to use it to paint and get your color swaps. Okay, you can use one egg to make several colors. In this case, I made such a large mess, it was easier to stick with one color. 
right. So, all right, now that I have explained a brief history of it, I have ex given a somewhat botched example of how to make it, but that's kind of how art, all art goes, is you try something new, you make a mess, you have fun, and you use it. There's no such things as mistakes, only happy little accidents. That's a quote from Bob Ross. All right. I hope today you have learned something about how to make egg taint, and I hope you all have a fun time and can get painting. There we go. Wow. Um,